An easy way to visualize the distribution of stock returns is to plot a histogram. So I'm going to show you how to do that using Excel. First thing you need to do is to go to the data tab and find data analysis over here. Now, if you haven't used this before, it may not show up. In that case, you have to manually add that in. You can just go to tools and find Excel add-ins and make sure analysis tool pack is checked. Right, click here. There are lots of tools here, but now we need the histogram. Click OK. The first thing to do is to select your input range. So in this case, my monthly returns. So I've just done that. Then if you want, you can specify a bin range. You don't have to. If you don't, Excel will select them automatically. But in this case, I will actually create some bins. So let me actually cancel this and create those bins first. So I'm going to start from minus 40% and increase this interval by 5% at a time. So I would like to find the number of observations that fall into each of these bins. Here we are. So these are going to be my bins. So go to the bin range, select them over here. I'll have to select my input range again, again. Done. You need to select an output range as well. So let's just select here. And I would like to get a chart as well. So this needs to be checked in that case, but you don't have to. So let's click OK and see what happens. Here we are. So these are the bins selected and the frequencies in each bin. And here's my histogram. Let's make this look a bit nicer. So we've got here. Microsoft, let me get rid of this, Microsoft return distribution. As you can see, the monthly returns, the, the distribution peaks around 5 per 5 to 10 percent, there are 112 months within this range. And most of the observations are between zero to 10%, but you can see the long tails going all the way down to minus 30%. And there are also a couple of extreme returns, returns on this tail as well. So I, I will do the same exercise for another stock, Kellogg, just to compare. The distribution between these two stocks. Go to data again. Uh, let's first create our bins. Let's select from minus 40 to 40 percent. So these are going to be my bins. Data analysis, histogram, and this is nicely selected, so I need exactly the same data. This needs to be um, just one cell down, starting from F18 to F34. Up range is fine. So let's click OK. And here we are. Let's get rid of this. Make this a bit larger and let's call this Kellogg return distribution. Now do we see anything different? Well yes it is a bit different. 
Okay, again, we see that most observations are within this range. But we don't get much just below minus 10%. There is here, there are certainly some returns. There are six observations within this range. There's nothing here. And also, if you look at the upper tail, the right tail, it's also a bit less populated compared to Microsoft. So the tail is a bit longer and fatter over here. So it seems the distribution of Kellogg is slightly more tight around the mean than compared to the Microsoft. So the next thing I'm going to do is to examine this more formally, the, the difference between the distribution of these two stocks using descriptive statistics. <laughs> 